Hello viewers and welcome to the third episode of Space Science with Python. Now last time we were talking about how to set up a virtual environment um, with uh, pip, with, with went and so on. And virtual environments are quite nice if you have a very, let's say, small project that requires only Python dependencies and libraries. Now sometimes your project grows larger, it becomes more complex and the number of requirements is increasing and uh, you, are, you don't also need Python libraries but also other tools like Qt, like Redis, like um, other server toolkits like Spark and so on. And instead of overloading your operating system, we, there is a way to encapsulate everything in one single place without bothering your OS. And some of you may now think, wait a second, mm, encapsulating stuff, tools, into a single place. There's something called containerization, and that's right. We will use it today. We will use Docker to containerize not our application, but our development environment. And this is a pretty nice feature I would like to show you today. Now, all the scripts that are to shown today and that will come up in the next couple of videos and tutorials will be put in my github repository and the link is in the description. Now you, so you don't have to uh, type everything but you can also create a git um, pull and copy the entire content. Now first of all before we start we need to install VS Code so the link is also in the description as well as Docker. Um, and the link is also sh put in the description. You need to install everything and start Docker also. And you can see it here in my operating system that Docker is already running and set up. Now, the thing is that you may say, well, yeah, it's Mac operating system, but I have Windows, so I have to close now the tutorial and I cannot follow the space science stuff anymore. That's not right because um, the remote container thingy I would like to show is completely operating agno operating system agnostic so it runs on every operating system and this is pretty nice and before we talk about this uh, well already spoiled remote container stuff let's create a folder which we will just call vs code or set up vs code now let's move to our vs code environment and here, as I already spoiled, we need an extension, and this extension is called Remote Containers. So you just click on the extension, and then Remote Containers, and you see here in the marketplace this extension from Microsoft. And what does it do? Well, we will define a Docker file that defines our working environment. So we will put not all, we will put our Python code in there. But later, when the project grows, we may need also other stuff from the Linux world. And instead of installing everything on my Mac and yeah, debugging everything and then uh, being bothered by by and by the development environment doesn't work, we will put everything in this container, and this will work then out of the box if the Docker file is written correctly, of course. Um, so. The remote container extension creates the container, it builds it up, and after successfully building the container, VS Code is connecting to the container, and then we are working inside the container. So everything is encapsulated, everything is isolated, but if we want to, for example, program a web application, we can also explore, expose ports to the outer world. So it's up to us how to define the Docker file. Now I also installed this already, so let's move to our project here with tutorials and set up VS Code. Now, surprisingly, the folder is empty and we need some files. The first one is the requirements.txt. Requirements.txt. And there we can put our yeah, Python libraries we would like to have, like NumPy, like SciPy like uh, JupyterLab, JupyterLab, and also matplotlib. Um, don't, don't, 
don't be confused that I just you know write here only the names and later it will grow um, or will be or, or that you lose the overview. I will also add comments and everything in the GitHub repository so that you can can you take can you take your time and read through the requirements TC and read also through the other Python um, notebooks and so on that I will provide uh, in the next in this video and also in the next one. So requirements txt is set. We will now create our Docker file. So Docker file, and the Docker file. Let's, for example, install Python 3.9 Buster. And there are different images um, you can install. Uh, Buster is, I think, you know, medium size. There are some lightweight things. But let's let's take a take a larger one, maybe. For later, we need also some other requirements. Spoiler alert, we will need it, so I just add it here. We can also create a description if we want, so it's not, it's optional, but maybe helpful, like remote container test. And also, if you want to version everything, you can also create a label with mm, a version number, like let's say this is version number zero. Quite optimistic. Considering that scikit-learn uh, released 1.0 after a decade or so, um, we copy also our requirements txt, and then we also have to pip install it, right? So we we know that especially in the beginning, pip is always complaining to upgrade it, so we can really yeah just write it, upgrade it, and then afterwards we can say. That we would like to install also our um, Python libraries based on the requirements txt that we have actually in here. So requirements txt, pretty nice. And then also create it with notebook and also the working environment. You can also later um, create or expose your ports and so on if you want to to um, create a web application and so on. So Docker has a lot of functionalities. This is now very, very simple and rudimentary. So let's run or let's build the container. And how do we do that? Well, we press Shift, Command P and the shell is opening. And we see here already remote containers. So if you just write in, you will find it. I think under Windows it's Shift, Alt, probably so you have to find it out and there we can open the folder in container or rebuild and open in container so the very first time we will open it but later in the other tutorials if more um, if the requirements txt changes or the docker file we need to rebuild and reopen it otherwise it will use the ones that has been created before um, but don't worry I will I will tell you that with the beginning of every video if I change something in the docker configuration or not. Now, <laughs> talking about it, I see that I just uh, just called the Docker filer, so Docker file, and now let's open the folder in container. Um, the folder here, set up VS Code, and then it asks us how we would like to create our container configuration, and we say, well, from the Docker file. Now you see here the um, how the Docker con Docker how the image is being built. It's now command three, run pip install, and with the size of the Docker file, this building can also take some some moments, some minutes even. So let's wait for a few seconds. Now welcome back. Our container is now created. Everything works now. VS Code is connected to the container, and you can see now that well, I don't have my user ID anymore, Thomas or something. It's now called root at and then some strange number, and this is now the container ID. So we have successfully created the container and connected to it. Now we can um, yeah, play around in this environment and what can we do? Well, let's create some testing a Jupyter notebook. But before we do it, we uh, VS Code created another folder with another file called dev container JSON. And this is extremely mighty because this allows us to further customize our working environment but not the docker file but really the but really vs code itself so let's take a look at our extension pack we can for example 
search for Jupyter. And we have now here Jupyter um, uh, from uh, extension from Microsoft, and we can install it in our container itself. So this is now installed in the container. But maybe I would like also to provide you the information that I installed this extension. So how, how can I do it? Well, I just right click on the on the extension I just installed and say add to con dev container JSON. So the information that I installed that is now stall, um, stored in this uh, JSON file. You can see it now here, and if I push it to Git and you pull it from the repository and you will build the container, you will not only set up the entire environment with all the with all the tools and libraries and so on, but you will also automatically all install all the extensions that I put into this dev container JSON. And you might get an idea that if you work collaboratively with a lot of people, using maybe testing extensions or other extensions that may, may be useful or required for your project, this is extremely mighty. So uh, this is not only the Docker file for creating the, co the container, but also this dev container JSON that um, allows you to yeah, extend it beyond the Docker file and create configuration files for VS Code. You can also upload settings.json where you edit I don't know the, for example, the vertical ruler here on the on 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 the editor, and much much more. So it's highly customizable, and this is pretty amazing. Now let's create a new file where we would like to, um, well, do our testing with the Jupyter notebook, and um, would call it like I don't know something like first try dot ipynb, and we can now say well numpy smp and maybe put something like I don't know random rand int 10 up 10 so yeah so this works we have random numbers we can also see if we can um, create some plots with pyplot as plt yeah this also is installed now perfect we yeah can maybe uh, set up a dark Dark, dark mode environment because otherwise it's extremely bright and then we can create a figure a figure so figure size like um, 10 or 8 and then plotting something yeah very random numbers so nothing fancy just for showing that it works hopefully Sometimes, yeah, I don't know, the x label, x axis, and the y axis as well. Y label, y axis. Yeah, so simple plot, simple plot, everything is fine. And we changed a lot of, oops, we changed a lot of things now in our environment. We are in the container, don't forget it. But if we take a look at GitHub Desktop, GitHub Desktop will say, hey, you changed a lot of things here. They are, uh, you, do you want to commit them? Okay, the main branch is protected, so I have to make, create another branch. But it immediately sees everything. So the container itself is encapsulated with all the libraries and so on, but you can ex still exchange files, which is pretty nice. And um, that's basically it. So um, yeah, I hope, you enjoyed it. You can play around with the Docker file. You can play around with the dev container JSON and so on. Try to install your own extensions if you are an intermediate user of Python. Please try it a little bit. Play around um, with maybe Flask or also exposing ports and so on. And for our um, space science tutorials, we will mm, use this setup. We will um, add more requirements to it but everything will be explained in the next video when we will talk about the earth and how to compute the position of the earth and to see whether the results also make sense or not so i hope you enjoyed it um, the how to set it up in this yeah, new fancy way maybe some of you are new it maybe for some of you it's completely new and if it doesn't convince you yet well believe me 
we will add more and more tools, making things more complex, and you don't want to install everything on your machine. So Docker and containeri con the containerization of applications and environments really helps the developer to keep everything clean and tidy. Until then, see you next time, and take care.